First, look at this scene. It's the garden of the Villa Medici in Rome, painted in 1817. Now look. How you see that same landscape is completely changed, because now you're seeing it through a window. The fascination certain 19th century European artists had with windows is the subject of an exhibition called Rooms with a View at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Here the window is the main motive. It is as a threshold between what is here and what is beyond. You have a picture within a picture. We begin with Caspar David Friedrich, this painting of him by a colleague. Friedrich became Germany's most famous landscape painter. But long before that, in 1805 and 6, he drew the windows of his Dresden studio in sepia ink. He couldn't sell the drawings, so over the years, other painters saw them, and they inspired a small revolution. These are remarkable, as small as they are, because they are neither views through windows nor are their interiors. Sabine Rewald is curator of Rooms with a View. It's a stark, sober rendition of just a window. Nobody had done that before. Friedrich had undoubtedly seen this Vermeer, painted in the 17th century. It hangs in a Dresden gallery. But take a look at the window. It just lights what's going on inside the room. There's no view. What Friedrich did was move the window front and center. He made it critical to understanding and feeling the mood of the picture. This is Friedrich's wife from the back, looking out at the masts of sailboats on the River Elbe. She is between the near and the far. Everything at a distance becomes romantic. Distant people, distant events, distant landscapes. Romantic for Friedrich and his Dresden contemporaries didn't mean hearts and flowers. It meant impossible dreams, unrequited love, yearning, longing. What better prop than the window? It was a small world. All of these pictures are by Dresden artists who knew each other, even painted each other. They experimented with the same ideas. But they weren't the only European painters who found windows irresistible. This was the view from the artist Martinus Rorby's parents' house in Copenhagen, Denmark. It seems that most of these have a great stillness about them, these paintings. Yes, they have a stillness. Why the stillness? Perhaps because it was the opposite of what was happening outside. From 1803 until 1815, an estimated two and a half million soldiers lost their lives, another million civilians, across Europe in what were called the Napoleonic Wars. Copenhagen was a major battlefield. So was Dresden. Dresden was occupied by French troops and life was very grim. There were plagues, people were hungry. Uh, life was terribly difficult, daily life, so this is... During those war years and even afterward, painters set scenes of ordinary, undisturbed daily life against windows, families together. But the people were often incidental, faceless, honest-to-goodness window dressing. With or without them, each scene was really a conversation with the viewer about light emotion, form. This shows that even a landscape that is, not, let's not say boring, but let's say not very interesting or... or, or oh, rather, go or, ahead, say boring. Or, or, or let's, let's a boring landscape, if you put it in a frame, in a window frame, it becomes evocative. Take a look. Now look again. The landscape is as boring, but the picture becomes uh, interesting because of his wonderful framing. A century later, Matisse painted windows. So did Picasso and Andrew Wyeth. To this day, the subject is tantalizing because a window frames a question. What does it mean? How does it feel to be on the inside looking out?